Welcome back. LT Volk here with episode 9 of the Fallout 1 playthrough. In this episode we're gonna continue exploring the glow and uh, hopefully finish it all in this episode. And then go to the Brotherhood of Steel to join up. Uh, one thing I've done off screen is uh, use two red axes to get my radiation resistance to 100% because uh, pretty much every few seconds you gain a dose of radiation. And right there I used the rope on this beam. Now we can just descend and see uh, what we can find. Looks like another explosion here or the continuation of that crater from above. And let's see if we've got any good stuff in these lockers. Nothing in this one. Maybe something is in here. Oh yeah. One stim pack. Better than nothing. And let's see if we got anything on these remains. Right away, always good. Didn't do that guy any good but we'll put it to good use. Got a couple more buddies. And this technician had red axe and red away. Very good. I don't think we need any uh, ammunition. And most of the gear I'm not gonna be looting because uh, it's gonna be a lot of weapons, a lot of ammo, but I've got the weapons that I'm gonna be using, so... Anywho... Uh, let's check the locker over there. Tycho walked into a mine. Which, you know, is unfortunate, but he seems to be alright. Yeah, like I said, here there is a whole bunch of items. I'm just gonna take the book, because that can be used later on. To read through and gain some skills. There is a rifle there that we don't need. And up here is a corpse encased in odd armor. And he has a pass card and uh, a data disk. So let's see what's on there. Alright, now go into Pip Boy, Status, and Ancient Brotherhood Tape. Captain Maxon was right. This place is death. I'm writing this so that if we don't make it back, someone someday might find out what happened to us. We made it to West Tech Research Facility after 20 days of hell. But that was the easy part. The radiation levels began to shoot up as soon as we could see the giant crater. We checked our supplies and figured with our armor and our anti-red supplies we'd be fine for at least a day of exploring. We felt it was a calculated risk, but the technology we had the potential of recovering was worth it. We climbed down the crater to the first level and everything seemed to be according to plan. The power was off so we didn't need to circumvent the security or so we thought. There wasn't much of value on this level so we pushed on. The second level was more of the same. When Jensen dropped to the third level all hell broke loose. The security sensors had been burned out on the first two levels, but not on the third. Jansen was cut to ribbons before he knew what had happened. We'd never seen weapons cut through power armor like that. Men started dropping right and left, and the ones who were still alive lost it. I tried to regroup, but only Sato and Camarillo made it back up here to the first level with me. The fact that I can smell Sato's burning flesh where his arm was taken off means that my power armor is no longer airtight. 
So I'm sucking up a lot more rats than I had planned on. I'm leaking hydraulics at an alarming rate. We need to get far enough away from this place before my armor dies. Camarillo seems fine physically, but he wandered off about an hour ago, mumbling something about Gehenna. That bastard has all the anti-red. That leaves Sato and myself. We can't make it far enough away from here without the anti-reds. So I've gotta try to find Camarillo before it's too late. Sergeant D. Allen, United States Armed Forces. There we go. So it's the remnants of the U.S. Army who uh, survived the initial drop of the bombs and they came over here to check it out. All right, let's see what we got on this computer. Got primary power offline, secondary power online. Let's go to power management, emergency power. Nope. All right. I don't think we really need to do much here. Actually, uh, let's see if we can turn on the primary power. Reinitialize primary power. And we got error. Primary system in initialization failed. Diagnose. Failure. Generator level 6. Inoperable service needed. Okie dokie. So, these guys came over here and I think the group uh, had uh, Sergeant Maxton, who became the leader or the founder of the Brotherhood of Steel. And there was another mine. And up here we're gonna use that key card we found to hopefully open this door. Alright, got disarmed the electric field. Now we can step on and go to level 2. And actually one thing I'm gonna do before we proceed any further is use uh, Mentats to increase my intelligence and perception for the remainder of this area. And it's more of the same here. Primary power offline, yep. Alrighty. Let's see what else we can find here. Now here we got a whole bunch of uh, broken down robots. And let's see if we can use science to disable them. And get some uh, experience out of it. Science or repair? I think repair maybe. Once again, bear with me, I haven't really played this game in a while, like I said before. And I only played through it maybe two or three times. But here we got a locker room with some weapons that we're not gonna pick up. I don't think. Grenades? No, we don't need grenades. Uh, got a leather armor there. My combat armor is better, so we're just gonna leave it. And let's continue on. Looks like uh, this was the extent of the damage, so the next level shouldn't have any uh, damage from that blast. Got some more people who've been vaporized. Actually, let's take the plastic explosive in case we need to clear some rubble or something like that. And we've got a plasma grenade that we're gonna grab as well. What else we have here? I think one of the corpses might have like uh, another pass card. But we'll see. And if not, we'll just drop down. Yep, there we go. The red card that we're gonna grab. And continue on our merry way. But this is uh, one of the 
final area is allows you to learn more about some super mutants and how they came to be. And also that they're sterile that you can use to uh, convince the final boss to, you know, abandon his plan. And let's... Oh, take a point of damage. Alright, here we're just gonna use a uh, lockpicking skill. No, that didn't work. Let's let's try it again. All right, I think we gotta use the card, the red card, and see how that goes. Did it work? No, it did not. All right, yellow card. I don't know. I don't play soccer. All right, there we go. That that worked fine. And now let's go to level three. Now we got some more disabled robots. And let's see. They actually got some HP and you can actually fire on them and try to destroy them before uh, they reactivate. Oh yeah, Let, let's do that. Let's kill them all. And we actually get an experience out of it, so... Easy peasy. And that robot uh, was actually talking. Let's finish it off. Was killed. Alright. Let's continue firing on that guy. And this is just gonna make our escape a little bit easier. Because otherwise, when uh, the facility reactivates, all of the robots will reactivate as well. And they can be a bit of a pain. But there are some left on the above level, so you'll be able to see how dangerous they can be. Let's see. And you can loot these dead robots. The robo brains got the shotguns. And in the show, the bot becomes kind of like a robo brain. Yes, sir. Let's continue on and see what else we can find. I don't think there's anything in here. This room seems like uh, it's got some loot in there. Maybe a couple books that we'll be able to uh, utilize. Or just some stuff that we're not gonna grab. Yeah. That's just ammunition. We don't need any of that. Uh, small energy cell. No, we don't need it. I mean, I do have that uh, alien blaster that I picked up in the special encounter with the UFO. But I don't think we're gonna use it much. Because once I uh, get my energy weapon skills up, I'm going to use that turbo plasma rifle. Because it will be like 2 AP per shot. And it does great damage. Alrighty then. Let's go. Let's try to use the red key card because I think that's the one we have to use to descend to the level below yep there we go disarm the electric field oh and I'm out of BB gun or BBs rather for my BB gun which is not great but I think should be enough for us to finish uh, this area at least all right let's go to level four what we got here oh we got a computer mainframe 
Well, let's uh, kill off the robots here. Don't want to deal with them. That one was killed. And that one was also killed. Really good. Tycho reloads and is moving in. Alright, Tycho. Let's just don't get hit by stray BBs. And we got some more experience there. And let's see how much we need to next level. Uh, 6300. Which is quite a bit. But hopefully resolving the quest or actually getting to the Brotherhood will get me enough to level up. And then we can level up our energy weapon skill. And here, once again, I'll take the book and anti-radiation stuff. Uh, EMP grenades? Yeah, I'll take them. They're actually really useful against robotic enemies. Can disable them and do plenty of damage. Moving on. Here we got some tanks. Some sort of medical or experimental apparatus. It looks as if it could contain a human or larger sized body. Alright, fair enough. Let's see if there is anything on this charred corpse of a guard. Or maybe not. Yeah, blue card. There we go. I'll take that. Thank you very much. And in this room, we got several lockers that we'll be able to loot. What we got here? It's the same tank as before. Up here, there are some rockets. Not using the big, big gun skill. An assault rifle and a crowbar that we're not gonna grab. Yeah, I'll take all of the books. Thank you. Now, let's see if we can uh, communicate with this machine. With this computer. It's an extremely advanced computer. And it says, how may I be of assistance? Who or what are you? I am a machine intelligence dedicated to research and installation control. I'm called Zax. What kind of research? I am specifically programmed for research into biological studies including pathology and genetic research. My primary function is an extrapolation of information of complexity levels exceeding human capacity. So, you're pretty smart, eh? I am a beyond a typical rating in human terms. However, it would be safe to say that no more than one ten billionth of the history of human population can match my reasoning capabilities. Uh, yeah. I am delighted to have been of assistance. Alright, let's try to talk to it again and find out some more information. How may I be of assistance? Tell me about this installation. Westec Research Facility Founded in 2002 as a private contractor for the United States government. The company initially consisted of two divisions, the Advanced Weapons Research and the Biomedical Science Division. In 2069, Westec was the single largest contractor for the United States government. Its largest contract being powered infantry armor model T-51B. In light of significant advances in 2076 by the NBC on the Pan Immunity Virion project, 
the United States Defense Department in fear of international espionage. Move the team onto the site to secure and oversee the project, now dubbed the FEV, Forced Evolutionary Virus Project. Can you tell me particulars about the specific areas? My sensors are currently non-functional in the surface facility and the subterranean levels 1 through 3. I can, however, provide descriptions of levels 4 through 6. Level 4 Level 4 Research Facility this level contains testing areas and laboratories for experiments in biology and physics. Tell me about level 5. Level 5. Secure Testing Labs. This level contains a lab for experimental prototype testing and a research lab for the classified subjects. These subjects provided some of the necessary impetus for the development of the FEV. Tell me about level 6. Level 6. Barracks and Control Operations. Contains living facilities for lab personnel and guard contingents and operations meeting room. Back up a bit. How may I be of assistance? Grant me access to the mainframe. Access denied. Terminating input. Alright. Fair enough there. Let's see if we can try that again. Uh, grant me... Once again, yeah, I'm gonna say the same thing. Grant me access to the mainframe. Alright. And it doesn't want to. Okie dokie, it's cool. And let's see, what was my, uh... Yeah, I had high enough intelligence, but... It decided not to allow me... In. Let's continue on. Actually, I think we just came through here, right? And let's try uh, this elevator up here. See a sturdy rusted door. And let's try and use that blue key card we found. That was kind of cool. They mentioned the uh, T 51 power armor, which was uh, mentioned in the show several times. Alright, this elevator is inoperable. I think we gotta go into this one and go one level below just making sure that we didn't miss anything okie dokie artichoke I believe this one was the red card yep disarm that and let's see if we can get to level 6 there we go up here, we'll uh, try to repair this uh, generator. So, uh, we're gonna go into our character screen skills and we're gonna pump up our repair to 50, which should be enough to fix that generator. And we see a Vault Dweller. I guess it was a Vault as well. What did they say? Level 6 was the Barracks, right? Yeah. We got a whole bunch of people who are dwelling in this Vault. There we go. I got uh, half trouble pronouncing V's and W's sometime. You know, in case you uh, couldn't tell by my accent, English is not my first language. Yep, nothing here. All right, let's uh, let's repair this crazy computer slash generator. 
And we're actually gonna utilize a multi-tool to do that. Which is right here. And let's see how that works out for us. Yep, you start up generators and all systems seem to be coming back online. So we're gonna use this terminal to turn on the primary power. Reinitialize primary power. Let there be light! But I think this also activates the robots. But we'll see how it goes. And there is some more dead person in power armor. Nothing on them. Let's see what's on this guard. 10, 10 millimeter pistol. We are way beyond that. And there we go. The robots have activated, so we're gonna start firing on this floating eye. And we're able to kill it off. And now we shot the Robo Brain three times and then turn. Thankfully, the Robo Brains got the uh, shotguns, I believe. So they need to get kind of close to be able to do anything for us or to us. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what. No, oh, he had a sniper rifle. It's cool. And here, let's use that blue key card to hopefully get access to level five. Alright, authorization granted. Let's hop in in the elevator and go to level 5. We got some more robots here. Alright, this, this might be tough, but let's see what we can do. The robot is moving towards us. Alright, well, well, robot. I'm gonna move up one hex and then fire on you with all of my shots. Two, three, and the final one. Here we go. Haven't killed it and we've got some more robots incoming. Ow. <laughs> Tycho tried to shoot one of the robots, but missed and hit me instead. Which, yeah, it happens. So now we're just gonna finish off the floating eyes. And end turn. We've got another Robo Brain. This looks like a shotgun, but it could be a sniper rifle too. Let's finish off this guy as well. One, two. Alright, and end turn. The robot moves through the door. Tycho fires his sniper rifle, does really good damage actually. And now we can uh, concentrate fire on this one and hopefully kill it off. Might need a critical hit though to do that. Three and four. And that one was a miss, huh? Alright. Ow. That's not very neighborly of you guys. So, gonna heal up back to uh, full health. Because some of those hits really hurt, despite the armor. Alright, let's uh, fire on the floating eye. One, two. And it was killed. Alright, Tycho. Doing great, buddy. Old buddy, old pal. So we'll continue firing on this Robo Brain, and hopefully 
Oh, there we go. We got a critical hit, and we're able to kill it off. And turn. And now we should be able to finish off this floating eye. There we go. Got it! Got plenty of experience out of it, too. Let's see what this terminal says. No, it's still the power. Well, fine. I didn't want to learn anything new anyways. And here we got another room with a whole bunch of lockers and the old computers. I might be dating myself, but I actually saw these computers in the data center before when I was a kid with the tape and punch cards. What's in here? All right, here we got a plasma rifle and some ammunition for it. I'll just take the ammunition. And here we got a whole bunch of pistols. And sensors for the Pip-Boy. And what we got here? Some more energy weapon ammo that I'm gonna actually grab. A radio, I don't think we need one. Or we already have one, rather. That we grabbed off of that that super mutant a minigun no that's not the type of weapon i use we'll grab some more of the emp grenades i should probably equip them and some sort of uh data disc again let's see what it says hey where are you there you are all right, we got downloaded the data. Let's go into the Pip Boy um, status Delta experiment tape. The military has deemed it necessary for us to research further in depth the effects of wave technology upon living organisms. We have taken light and sound as the basis of our studies. By manipulating the amplitude of the light waves and magnifying the frequency, we have been able to get lasers which will cut through a few feet of steel. Unfortunately, the power to do such a task has not been fully developed. We have other scientists looking into it. So there we go. They made some laser weapons. Which I think are actually a reality. They're utilized, or I think they're they're experimenting on using the lasers for military applications. All right, nothing here. Let's see what else we've got up in this locker. Another data disk that we'll be able to read through as well. Come on. All right, got the experience points and let's see what it actually says. Status, FEV experiment tape. All right, and that's a lot of text. I don't think I'm gonna read it. So, eh, I'll read it. Just because I think uh, the resolution on my screen is not that great, so it might be blurry. All right, let 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 me read it for you. Log date March 21, 2075. Major Barnett has ordered experiments with batch 10011 of. Bad immunity virion, which has been renamed FEV for forced evolutionary virus. His main concern is with the side effects of the quad helix structure rather than its main effect of replicative stability. 
He believes the new structure is the next logical step for the mammalian nuclei. Experiments with the single-celled organisms is a great success. While their basal metabolism appears unchanged, their immunity to infection and radiation is exceeding all earlier expectations. Addendum. Uh, chloroplasts seem unaffected by the virion. Further experiments on plant cells have been cancelled by order of Major Barnett. Log date May 9, 2075. We infected several species of flatworm with FEV. Within hours, the worms have increased in size by 20%, and 39 separate viral contagions were re resisted by the population. Each sample was allowed to continue for several generations and the new DNA structure was successfully passed on to Warren's progeny. Although only asexual reproduction was noticed in the samples. Experiments with insects have had less success. Major Barnett has postponed these experiments until further notice. Log date June 30, 2075. Several lab strains of White mice have been infected successfully with FEV. Again, an increase in size was noted within hours, and after 9 days, all mice had stabilized at 31% larger than the control group. Dissection revealed the most increase in size in striated muscle tissue and certain internal organs, such as liver, heart, and kidneys. In a surprising finding, the infected mice were found to run mazes in less than half of the time of the control group. More testing will be needed to confirm this finding as significant. So, it's kind of going through all the different experiments from single cell, exper uh, single cell organisms to worms to mice. Now we have the rabbits, the next step up, which was done on November 9. We have infected 218 rabbits with FEV. Half of the subjects were implanted with electrodes to monitor EEG activity before and after the infection. Increased electrical activity in the brain was noticed in 3.2 seconds on average after injection. Again, the typical size increase was noted. However, increased aggression and posturing especially among males, was noted as well. Sacrifice and profusion yielded brain tissue that showed increased den dendritic connection, especially in the limbic system and frontal cortex. And my background is actually in like biochem, so a lot of this stuff is actually tracks with, you know, how you describe some of the scientific effects. Anywho, moving on. Log day, January, eh, January 12th, 2076. With batch 11011, we have improved the mitotic cycle efficiency by 43%. We have infected 53 raccoons with the new strain. In addition to the now expected size increase, behavioral tests confirmed an increase in intelligence and manual dexterity by 19 points on this index. Unfortunately, several subjects escaped confinement and had to be hunted down and dispatched. Major Barnett ordered the remaining subjects terminated. Two pairs were unaccounted for. Dot, dot, dot. That's, that's what happens when you do mad science. Sometimes the test subjects escape and turn on you. Alright, log date May 13th. We have spliced several new gene sequences supplied by Major Barnett's advisory team into FEV. With batch 11101A, we infected 23 dogs of both pure and mixed breeds and all experienced nearly immediate growth. The larger size was accompanied with increased aggressiveness, which no significant intelligence increase was noted. 
We plan to attempt crossover of 92 LL pairs with batch 11011, which was the original batch, the original successful batch, rather. All subjects were terminated after 14 weeks of study. Ah, poor doggies. Next, we got log date October 4, 2076. The crossover has been completed and 15 uh, chimpanzees were infected with batch 11111. Growth and immunity levels are unprecedented. Attempts to induce cancers in the subjects through radiological and chemical agents were not successful. Increased aggressiveness have led to isolating the subjects. Two subjects suffered violent epileptic seizures and died. All remaining subjects terminated. And here is the final entry. Major Barnett has ordered transfer of all FEV research to Mariposa military base. He plans to continue the project experiments on volunteer subjects. I am against this and would like it noted here that the research on human subjects is not recommended by myself or my staff. Alright, very good. And I believe there should be another... Um, like data disk here somewhere. Oh, probably right there. Got a couple more wall, uh, wall lockers, rather. There we go again. Let's see if we can find what we need. Yep, there it is. The final disc. And I think that's the one that actually allows you to talk down the final boss. I'm gonna grab some medical supplies here and uh, let's... Let's see if we can read it. Got a lot of junk in my inventory. All right, let's use it, and you know the drill. Go to the pit boy status, and I believe this is alpha experiment tape, right? Yeah. So it says prototype pan immunity variant project, in the hopes of countering the current bacteriological and viral agents employed by the Chinese government. We have manufactured a virus fragment consistent of ribonucleic acid RNA encased in a protein lipid sheath. This variant contains a specially arranged sequence of radiated amino acids that are capable of attaching to non-specific binding sites on deoxyribonucleic acid DNA, and force a non-replicating mitosis to occur. The resulting host cell is left with a quadruple helix DNA structure. Wow, that's unusual. Early tests are promising. The variant easily penetrates the cell membrane and attaches directly to the host DNA in the nucleus. Mitosis of the structure begins almost immediately. Cytokinesis is prevented by controlling this disposition of the Kinotokori fibers during anaphase. The entire mit mitotic cycle lasts approximately two hours, although phenotypical expression of the new structure may take days or weeks to become apparent. Yep, there we go. Uh, in addition to the effective immunity to bacterial and viral agents, the quad helix structure is almost entirely immune to errors introduced in base pairing during replication due to multiplicity of the base sequence. Radiation exposed tissue showed no mutations in the base sequence and the protein synthesis mechanism in the ribosomes were unimpaired. Over 80% of the sample's tissue contained quad helix DNA. Most affected was muscle and bone tissue, as well as secretory cells, as these cells seem most receptive to the virion. Sensory cells are the least affected. 
Surprisingly, even normally non-replicated nerve cells and non-somatic cells were induced to begin mitosis. Further experiments will be necessary to determine the results on these cells. Yeah, a whole bunch of scientific mumbo jumbo, but some of it is actually, you know, it can be uh, possible for that to happen. And they do use some language from biology. Okay, got shocked again. Let's use the blue card and see if we can uh, get on out of here. There we go. Disabled the field. Let's continue. And I actually just uh, double checked stuff and we're. Um, the hollow disk for um, the final boss is not located here. It's located somewhere else. But actually, let's see if we can talk to Zex and see if it has anything else to add to what we learned so far. Alright. Uh, I asked about the installation. Yep. Gonna ask this question right here. How does the virus work? My research into forced evolutionary virus or FEV indicates that it is a shifting absorptive virus. It copies DNA patterns much like RNA, storing those patterns in exons. These exons combined with the FEV are re-injected into host cells in typical viral infectious fashion. This causes host cells to regenerate their DNA. If the FEV reinfects the host with its assimilated viral patterns, how does it make a better specimen? The FEV is pre-programmed with introns of corrected DNA appropriate to the proper type of species. It therefore attempts to correct the DNA of the individual. However, as FEV is partially reliant upon the DNA of the individual and also includes portions of its own recursive code, the effects can be unpredictable. When inoculated into an individual with significant genetic damage, such as through radiation, it will cause the body's system to suffer massive overhauling, leading to organs failure and death. In a genetically viable individual, it rewrites portions of DNA, causing accelerated mutation usually leading to recursive growth due to the FEV's own patterns. This recursive growth leads to an increase in muscle and brain mass, but is often accompanied by disfigurement and damage to existing neural patterns causing loss of memory. What potential long-term side effects exist? As the FEV causes constant regenerative update to DNA, it would effectively render the subject largely immortal, as cell death would be upset by augmented growth. Additionally, as the gametes of the reproductive system consist of half cells using split DNA, they could be perceived as damaged by FEV, which would repair them, rendering the subject sterile. However, as my laboratory facilities are damaged beyond repair, this is conjectural. I cannot offer physical proof. You will have to, in human terms, take my word for it. <laughs> ah, that's pretty funny. Good 
FEV mutation be corrected with a counter virus? No. FEV does not retain unaltered original copies of the subject's DNA. Only a virus which reinfected the subject with original DNA could reverse the effects. Additionally, there is no known way to remove the FEV itself. Thanks for the information. I am delighted to have been of assistance. Alright, thank you Zex, and here we actually did learn that the mutants are sterile. Because uh, when the FEV infects you, it perceives gametes, which is your sex cells, as uh, damaged. Alright, let's go back out. I think we should be able to uh, travel all the way back to the Brotherhood of Steel bunker. And probably gonna end the episode there. But I think there is a couple more robot fights in this area. And I think we killed these guys while they were disabled. So you can see that just shooting the ro robots as you come across them is uh, preferential. And that's fine. We're not gonna come back and kill off every single robot. Alright, and here's the rope. Made it out. And we're ready to return to the Brotherhood of Steel Bunker. But first, let's uh, take this rat away, just in case. Got one radiation level. And travel out of here. Feel very nauseous, huh? That's because we're suffering from radiation sickness, I think. Uh, let's see. Pip Boy, no. Character screen. Um. Yeah, I think we should be all right here. Let's uh, continue on. And see what happens. Just uh, doing this so if my character is radiated, which he is now. No, he is not. Never mind. Yeah, we're good. And we lost actually quite a bit of uh, intelligence and perception, which can work towards to our advantage. So because our intelligence is much lower now, we can read the books that we found and gain more points from them. So let's read the books of science. There's one, two, and passing the time, I'm gonna read the repair ones, Dean's Electronics. And we're gonna read this guns and bullets. I think that's about it. I don't think we're gonna read the first aid book. Don't really need to. Let's see how our skills looks now. So our repair is slightly better, and once our intelligence recovers, it's going to be uh, much higher. Alright, let's move on out. Go north up here. And where is the Brotherhood? There it is. Let's go. Feeling very nauseous. Alright, now it's time to drink another red away. Nothing happened. Well, that's cool. Let's go. 
Brotherhood of Steel, where are you at? Let's leave this cursed area that got bombed to heck and back. And here we got another special encounter. We see an overturned truck in the distance. And let's see what we have in here. Uh, tenth thousand can. Wow, that's that's crazy. Got a whole bunch of bottle caps. All right, we'll take all of them. Yeah. Wow, I never got this random encounter. That's that's crazy. That's a lot of caps. Can you imagine getting this encounter like really early in the game? You'd be like rolling in dough be able to buy out pretty much all the stores but here we'll just grab all of it there we go wow thank you nuka cola truck for some caps that's quite special it really is all right and let's continue on to the brotherhood of steel and here we got a combat encounter or who are these guys? Police officers of the hub. All right, let me uh, put the weapon away and talk to them. Uh, I don't think they got much to say. All right. Yeah, they're talking about how I wiped out Decker. Cool. I think they're just patrolling because this is the hub. They're making sure nothing goes wrong in their neck of the woods. And here we are at the Brotherhood. And I think this is actually a pretty good point to stop the episode. On the next episode, we're gonna enter the bunker, get some better gear, and continue moving on towards the end game anyways thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon